I'd like to talk about a single constituent or a single component phase diagram. This is an example. This is the phase diagram for water. We can specify the physical parameters and the phases that are present for a given set of parameters. And again, these parameters can be temperature, pressure, magnetic field, uh, electric field, etc. In this case, we're just going to talk about temperature and pressure. So I've got pressure on the y-axis, temperature on the x. Uh, at one atmosphere, below zero degrees Celsius, we have a solid. Right at zero degrees Celsius, the solid will melt and form a liquid, and it will stay as a liquid up until you get to 100 degrees Celsius, and then it vaporizes and becomes a gas. So we have these three regions, a solid, liquid, and vapor region. As we change the pressure, we're essentially saying that this blue line is a change in the uh, melting temperature. So if we go to a slightly higher pressure, then the up in pressure is going to shift the melting point to a lower temperature, or the yeah, the melting point to a lower temperature. And it's going to shift the vaporization point to a higher temperature. So this phase diagram is a way of mapping out what phases are present in a set of conditions. Now, on the line, so for example, anywhere on this line, you have, here, you have both solid and liquid present. Any point on this line, you have both liquid and vapor present. And any point on this line, you have both a solid and a vapor present. So this is uh, below this uh, pressure of 0 0.6 kPa uh, and below the temperature of 0 0.01 degrees Celsius, you have sublimation where the solid will turn straight into the vapor without going through a liquid phase. So there is no longer a, a melting temperature. Which brings us to this point. This point is called a triple point. It is the temperature, 0 0.01, and pressure, 0 0.6. At that, all three phases are present at the same time. And there are many uh, YouTube videos that you can you know, look at in which people you know, set the pressure and temperature in order to achieve a uh, triple point for various uh, substances. And lastly, I want to point out that there is also an, another type of point, a special point. So if that's a triple point up here, we have what's called a critical point. And that critical point in the case of water uh, occurs at 374 Celsius and 20, well, roughly uh, 22,089 kPa. So as long as you are, are below that, you have water that behaves kind of normal. As you get above that, we lose the vaporization line. It, it disappears. And up in this region, we have what's called a supercritical fluid. Supercritical fluids are actually pretty weird states of matter. As material scientists, we don't deal with it that much because it, it's a fluid in materials people. We're interested in solids. Um, so we're not going to talk about super, supercritical fluids. What you should know is that they have some fairly interesting properties because you can't tell if it's a liquid or a gas. The atmospheres of uh, gas giants, such as, as Jupiter and Saturn, are supercritical fluids. And we use supercritical fluids in the laboratory for uh, extraction processes. So for example, uh, the decaffeination of coffee. Uh, you can decaffeinate coffee using uh, supercritical fluids. Uh, but for our purposes, we're really interested in solids. So this is a, a single constituent phase diagram. And if you had other properties, for example, you had uh, 
you know, pressure, temperature, and electric field, well then you could have a, a electric field sticking out of the board and you would have an axis for each and you would have a volume of space that is defined as solid, vapor, liquid, and you would also have critical points and uh, uh, triple points or yeah, triple points where uh, you specify the states of, of uh, the special points within our phase diagram.